So we need to understand what a progressive web app is. And to do that, let's try to define what the progressive web app is right now. First, let's say that a progressive web app is an open definition, meaning that there is no single definition out there right now. So it's a mix of different features that we can use on a website today to create an app-like experience. The concept was embraced by Google, basically by the Chrome team, because of the new features that were available on Chrome. Now, it's not just on Chrome because other browsers are also embracing oppressive web apps, including Firefox, Opera, and Samsung. The basic idea of a progressive web app is that it's a model for creating an app-like experience for mobile devices mostly, using latest web technologies in a progressive way. Let's see what the progressive way means. In terms of features, a progressive web app should have instant loading. So I need to get into that app immediately, like a native app. Also, it should be easy to discover. For example, using Google, using a search engine. That's one way to discover one app. It should be network independent, meaning that it should work with a good network connection, a 4G connection that is really working, or a Wi-Fi connection. It should also work where there is no connection, so when the user is offline. And also, it should work with a bad connection. Okay, We're going to talk about that later in this training. It should be responsive, meaning that it should cover as many devices as possible using responsive web design. It should be install installable, so basically we will be able to install that web app, that app, in the user's home screen or app launcher. It depends on the platform. Another feature is that it should be secure, meaning that we should serve these files through HTTPS, so through TLS. So we need to serve everything in a secure connection. It should be linkable, meaning that I should, for example, share a link on a social network or in a messaging app, such as WhatsApp. So I can send a link for my web app or for one specific section of my web app known as deep linking. It should be re-engageable, so meaning that as a native app, Besides having an icon on the home screen, one of the main features, main abilities of a progressive web app is the ability to, to re-engage the user through push messages. So if I close my web app, if I don't open my web app for a while, the web app can send me message anyway. It should work everywhere meaning that even if with the user is on a device without supporting the technologies behind Progressive Web App, the web app should work anyway. And that's the whole idea of being Progressive. So for example, if we load this particular web app in an old browser, it will work. Of course, it won't have all the features. For example, probably we won't be able to install that app. But anyway, it will work inside the browser. And finally, it should be fast, not only with the initial loading, but also with the whole experience. So we need to offer a really good performance solution if we want to offer like an app-like experience. So these are the main 10 features of a progressive web app. And let me say you this. So you don't need to, pro to provide all the features because sometimes that's not possible or sometimes there is no need for. For example, in the case of a game, probably you don't have any use case for push notifications. But on some situations, um, the goal is to have as many features as possible. So when you have as many features as possible for your particular solution, then you have a progressive web app. Now let's talk about the progressive world. So what does progressive mean? This comes from a concept that is not new, known as progressive enhancement. 
And the whole idea here is that it's like an onion, like different layers of an onion. The whole idea is that we're going to start with a very basic web solution using just standards, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and we're going to add more layers on top of that if the browser supports that layer. For example, if the browser supports the icon in the home screen, so the installation process, we're going to add that and the user will get that feature. But if the browser doesn't support that, it will work anyway. The same happens with push notifications. So we're going to enhance the experience progressively based on compatibility. So that's the whole idea of being a progressive web app. When we are working with progressive enhancement, we need to remember that it's just a website. So it will work on any HTML browser, even an old one. Then we're going to add native installation on top of that, probably web push notifications, and also hardware and platform access. For example, let's say you want to use the camera of the user. So I don't know, you, you can create a, an augmented reality experience or a QR code reader. Well, you're going to add that experience if the current browser or web platform that is running your web app is supporting that feature. If the browser is not supporting that feature, your web app should work anyway. And what happens with progressive web app and what is usually known as a hybrid or a native web app? This is not the same. So we have big difference here. For example, I'm talking about Apache Cordova or PhoneGap applications. We have big difference because here we are not really packaging. We are not really going through the store. So we don't need to create any particular app, any particular, for example, APK in the case of Android. Um, so no packaging, no signing, no need for buying a publisher account, for example, on Google Play Store or on Apple um, App Store. So no need for that. This is just a website that will have like more power progressively based on the browser compatibility. And the main disadvantage that we have compared to hybrids is that there is no native plugins here. So if we don't have an HTML5 API for the feature that we want to use, then we don't have any options. So we need to go with a native solution or with a hybrid solution. But fortunately for us today, the abilities of HTML5, mostly on browsers supporting progressive web apps, is really good. We can access most of the hardware, most of the platform features. In terms of history, I wrote a book, Priming the Mobile Web, in 2010, so long time ago. And at that time, I had a full chapter talking about widgets and offline web apps. So the concept is not really new. Okay, so we have been dealing with similar solutions for a while. The whole idea is that here we have the technology, the performance, and the abilities to make this finally work. So I remember Nokia, uh, they have a WRT web runtime solution to create web apps. Also, Apple uh, was a pioneer here with the home screen web apps for iOS. Firefox has open web apps for Firefox OS and also for Android. And Chrome started also with home screen web apps. But these are not really progressive web apps because it's just one part of the solution, one part of the 10 features that we, we've covered before. So the idea here is that we have the technology, we have really new APIs, new specs that we will be able to create with that a really, really good app-like experience. Also, we have something called the Extensible Web Manifesto. The whole idea here is that some browsers realize that to increase the power of the web, we need to create low-level APIs. So we, developers, will have the power to do a lot of things using libraries and frameworks. And after that, then the browser will think on high-level APIs. Thanks to this, now we have the abilities, the specs, and the APIs to basically create really good progressive web apps. In terms of compatibility, it started with Chrome on Android. 
Now it's also on Opera, Samsung Internet Browser, and Firefox. So other browsers will come into the progressive web app stage with time. And we need to remember that even if a browser is not supporting progressive web apps completely today, the progressive web app will work anyway because it's just a website using just modern technologies. And because of a progressive enhancement idea, it will work anyway, for example, on iOS. You can check mobilehtml5.org for updates in terms of new compatibility on progressive web apps.